This is Advice from a Call Center Geek, a weekly podcast with a focus on all things call center. We'll cover it all from call center operations, hiring, culture, technology, and education. We're here to give you actionable items to improve the quality of yours and your customers' experience. This is an evolving industry with creative minds and ambitious people like this guy. Not only is his passion call center operations, but he's our host. He's the CEO of Expedia Interaction Marketing Group and the call center geek himself, Tom Laird. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Advice from a Call Center Geek. My name is Tom Laird. I'm the CEO of Expedia Interaction Marketing. We are a 600 seat call center outsourcer located here in northwestern Pennsylvania. How's everybody doing? I don't really do this normally, right? I don't normally do a, a Friday podcast and then do another one on uh, kind of back to smack on Monday. But this kind of, I don't know, the, the the topic of this podcast has been kind of ruminating all weekend long. And so I started developing it more last night and was going to do it later this week, but I'm kind of excited for it. So I want to, I want to kind of talk about it now. So as you guys know, I'm an outsourcer. So we, we work with clients, B2B clients that outsource mostly their customer support, maybe their inbound marketing, maybe there's some small type outbound. We don't do too much outbound, but mostly it's, it's inbound customer support. And, you know, I can talk all day long about why you should outsource. That's not the reason for the podcast, and you guys know I never do that. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to play the devil's advocate, and I'm going to flip this around, and I'm going to give you 10 reasons why you should never outsource. Right? Why you should never use me? Why you should never use anybody else um, that that outsources? And I want you to just think some of this stuff through, because these are the kind of the reasons that it fails, right? And if these are some of the reasons or, or some of the things that you would plan on doing, then you should keep things internal, uh, because the the experience that you're going to have with an outsourcer is going to be miserable. All right, so I'm going to get right into this, right? Um, so here we go. Top 10 in no particular order, reasons why you should never outsource your call center. Number one, you do not understand call center metrics, right? This happens a lot, believe it or not. You'll have, you know, somebody who was just put in a position to run the call center. Um, Word comes down to, hey, let's try to outsource. This person really doesn't have a lot of experience. Maybe they came from sales or marketing, right? So they're trying to go talk to call center vendors and different call center options for them, but they don't understand the metrics that are involved, right? So I'm not going to say you'd be taken advantage of, but it just makes the experience miserable, right? When you can't talk uh, the, the same type of language, understand what a, what a service level is or average handle time or talk time or after call work or occupancy or, you know, all those fun, you know, call center, you know, metrics and KPI. So do some research. If you don't have that person on your team, then you're not ready to outsource. You need to understand those types of things before you would, you know, before you you go and start the process of finding someone. Number two, you don't want to do calibrations or monitor. And you'd think that that would be, I don't know, kind of intuitive or, or crazy that a, a a company wouldn't do that. But there's a lot of them that just say, "Hey, I'm outsourcing. It's it's done. It's it's not in my hands anymore." And and I I disagree with that. There there needs to be a real, you know, partnership that gets built between the the customer, uh, the client, and the in the call center. And one of the things I think you need to do is you need to have the resources available to hold your call center partner accountable, right? That you they know that you're listening to calls. So if you if you don't want a blind monitor. Or I would say, especially if you don't want to set up weekly or bi-weekly or at least monthly calibrations where you guys can all sit around a phone or I guess a computer now and listen and, and score calls to make sure that you're all on the same page, then you're doing yourself a disservice and I would not outsource until you had that piece uh, that piece in there. Because it's important um, to, to make sure that you're you're listening and you understand what's going on on the other side of the phone, right? You can delegate a lot of things, but I I I would never delegate one hundred percent. You know the 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 total mo- you know monitoring and, and listening. I would keep some of that uh, keep some of that with you. With that, right? Um, if you don't have a vendor manager, that's 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 solid, right? So 
again, these first three reasons not to outsource probably could be one, but you know, really you need to have somebody who's the point of contact on your end that has some call center experience that can monitor, right? And that can that can be a a person that understands the KPIs or the metrics. So if you again, you can delegate a lot of things, but make sure that there's a really solid point of contact that's kind of dedicated to that call center partner. But they can be doing other things, but there there's one one voice from your company um, that that the vendor can do. And if you guys don't want to put the resources towards that, or if it's a you know kind of scattered of who you're going to talk to, again, the experience isn't going to be is not going to go well. Um, and I would not outsource. All right, number four. Let's get into another topic. Right. Number four is if you believe that price is the only reason to outsource, you should never outsource, right? That should almost probably be number one. And the reason is, the reason that I think you should outsource could be to save money. I think that that's probably a big reason, but it shouldn't be the only reason because then you're missing the point of outsourcing. And for me, the point of outsourcing is to utilize all the awesome, cool tools that I have available here at a really, really good price something that you probably can't beat internally. But if you say, listen, I don't want any of that stuff. Forget your analytics. I don't want WFM. I don't want advanced reporting. I just want to do a bare bones. I want the cheapest price that you can possibly get me. You're going to be miserable. And I'm going to use that word miserable a lot because a lot of these things, that's exactly what you're doing to yourself, right? You have to make sure that while the price needs to work for you, that all of the benefits of outsourcing are also being utilized from, from getting you extra data, from the reporting aspect, from the blind monitoring, to uh, being able to have analytic data and sentiment scoring and NPS and CSAT. A lot of things you can't do internally. That's the the really cool piece of, of the outsourcer is, is we have all the tools, right? You don't, you're not really a call center. Most, most businesses make a widget or do a service. Well, our service is service. Right. So we have and, and we have put in the infrastructure and, and built out all the really cool tools. So if you're not utilizing them and you're just looking at price, then you're you're making a big mistake. And it's a it's a reason that you should keep it internal. All right. Number five, you're looking for a vendor, not a partner. Right. I have been lucky in, in my career. The vast majority of partners or clients that we have worked for have been unbelievable people. People that I've learned a ton from. Uh, we've had a just an awesome relationship when when things would go wrong. Maybe you know their IT sent a, sent an email out that shouldn't have gone out to to a hundred thousand customers, and we're getting hammered with with phone calls from you know information with information that we don't have yet. You know we'll work through all that, right? Um, and and that's what really cool and great partnerships do. You know I'm available twenty four seven. Most call center outsources have somebody that's available twenty four seven where you know, we care about the the clients that we're working for. But if you're going to treat a vendor or treat a, a call center like a vendor, kind of treat them like they're below you, right? Then again, the relationship is going to fail, right? If you're not a people person, if the person who's in charge of the relationship is not a people person, the relationship is going to fail. Most of the time, you know what we see? The person who has that attitude, they don't have number one and number two, which we talked about, which they don't understand the business. They don't understand the metrics. Um, they don't really want to monitor. They want to try to get you, right? So if somebody has that, that get you attitude, it's normally because they're pretty insecure with, with what they know. Um, so they're trying to make themselves feel, you know, like, like they know more than you. We see that a lot because it's a niche industry, right? A lot of people don't grow up and say, Hey, I want to run a call center. I want to know how to do everything there is. So there's not, there's a lot of kind of ambiguity and and sometimes in, in what clients may have a full scope of knowledge on. So again, that's another reason to partner with us, right? Because we do know everything. We want to give you that knowledge. We want to help you. We want to try to make you have, have the best decisions that you can. So if you kind of treat us and talk down to us, you know, that's when we kind of, you know, we're not going to give that full support. That's kind of the, the human nature of it. So again, people, person, uh, be willing to, to partner with a, an organization. Um, you want them to be a true extension of your brand, not just somebody that you hire that you can beat up. All right, the number sixth reason why you should not outsource is that you don't care about analytic data. You don't care about the extra bells and whistles. And I can, we kind of talked about that earlier. But again, anybody can get you a, a, a quote unquote, you know, butt in a seat, 
right? Kind of probably shouldn't use that, but an agent in a seat, right? That's just taking calls. But again, the the real reason to outsource is all this rich amount of data and all this cool technology that we can offer. So if you're not into all that, right, you're probably going to save more money and be happy if you just kept it internal and you kept the bare bones, uh, bare bones operation. So that was, that's kind of number six. Number seven, and I think that this one's really important and probably should be higher, even though this is in no particular order, but your training isn't tight, right? So the call center can only only train with the information that we have. So if, if you're not ready to to really you know, give the call center partner all that information, if you don't have it in a way that we can easily use it for training, um, it, there's going to be issues. So this might not be why you shouldn't. Um, overall, but this probably should be maybe why you shouldn't do it now. You really got to take the time to get your training in, in order, be able to give over documentation, whether that's you know digitally or whether it's literally manuals, whatever that is. Um, it's really important to put that, that time in ahead of time. And if you don't have it, again, um, there's going to be issues. The, the, the call center is going to struggle, especially early on, and that's going to make everybody look bad. Right, so make sure that your your training is tight. If it's not, then you probably should not be talking to an outsourcer yet. Number eight, the eighth reason you should not that you think blended agents are okay. All right, and and I guess there is a place for this if it's you know you're looking at third shift, you're looking for just a couple calls coming in. But if your core kind of time of when your customers are calling, and you're kind of just looking for blended agents, uh, one, it's because your call volume is not heavy enough to really outsource, which is a reason you should keep it internal because the call center vendor or, or partner isn't going to care as much, right? If you're only taking a couple calls a day. Um, so make sure you understand that. And number two, you're not going to get the experience that you want with a blended agent. You're going to pay, you think you're going to pay a cheaper cost, but every single, we, we did the last episode on some of the tricks that call centers play. Well, if you're getting lower volume, I'm going to give you a higher or a call center is going to give you a higher per minute charge, right? So if you kind of look at the per minute charge, yes, you're not paying for a full dedicated agent, but you you may be paying pretty close to it. So you got to be careful with that. If your volume is not heavy enough or high enough, and what I would what I would tell you, your volume is heavy enough to outsource when you're at the three to five reps, that's the smallest you could ever possibly go. Um, so I think that that's, you know, where you would be if you, if you need to be less than that and you just want blended, I think you should keep it internal or you should hire a couple people or, or have a receptionist kind of take those calls because again, the experience will be, will be rough. All right. Number nine is we see a lot of executives who don't have a lot of call center experience, but they, they've heard of some call centers, right? And I'm not going to give them free uh, publicity on my podcast, but, you know, there's larger call centers that people have heard of. And so we see executives will say, hey, we want to be in one of these five top call centers, right? Quote, unquote, top. Basically means they're just big. I don't know how, how top they are. But what happens if, if you have a 10, 20, 30, 40 seat program and you're in a call center, you know, company with 30,000 seats, how important do you think your program is, right? If you're not willing to look at the proper size, right? If you're just kind of stuck with a name, I would keep it internal because that experience, again, isn't going to be great. So make sure that you're looking at the right size of your program to fit the call center that you're looking for. If not, um, then you're going to be spinning your wheels and you're going to be really frustrated when you're that, you know, that, that small fish in this giant pond or, or almost giant ocean, right? And number 10 kind of tags along with this. And before you outsource, you need to make sure that you have a full buy-in from all the key stakeholders in the organization, right? We, we've done the, the, the most downloaded episode was, was episode one of the podcast, which I guess makes sense because it's been the a brand been around the longest. But basically, we talked about who are the key stakeholders, right? Is it marketing? Is it sales? Is it the finance people? You know, who are the ones that really are the kind of the squeaky wheel uh, that – that drive it. Well, what I would tell you is you need to get marketing and finance and sales and and everybody understanding that this is the route that we want to take. If you have one of those departments that are not into it, they're going to make it miserable for the outsourcer. They're going to make it miserable for you. And it's going to be a constant battle. If you get a full buy-in from everybody, you know, you got a really good chance to, to make some things successful. But when you have that one, you know, department, and I would even say we see this a lot with 
and I, I don't want to shame any IT people, but but IT guys seem to want to hold on to what they have internally, right? So um, if if there's a, a one person or something that that is you know is going to make the experience miserable, you gotta you gotta fix that. You gotta talk to them. Um, that's one of the main reasons we see why why programs will fail is when there's not a full buy-in with the organization and they're constantly nitpicking on any possible thing that can go wrong. Um, so that's a that's a huge kind of piece of it. So again, I think a little something different. Um, hopefully that kind of gets your brain thinking if you are looking to outsource. You know, this is kind of a in a weird way. It's a it's a way that reasons I guess that you should outsource if you're kind of not doing some of these things, but. You know, a lot of organizations will have maybe one or two of these things, right, that are on their list. You know, when you kind of, when we, we talk to them and say, hey, this is our, my only problem is I have, you know, you know, Jim and finance, he's really not into it. You know, and we'll, we'll try to talk to Jim and try to kind of sell him and, and kind of move him around to, to understand why this is so beneficial from, from an ROI standpoint, right? If it's the marketing person, we're going to tell, talk about how great sales are going to be and some of the things that we can do there and the reports that we can offer. So, um, I think you know that's a really important piece of this to to get that buy-in. But so again, guys, I, I hope that that's interesting for you. Again, I think that's something a little bit different. Um, something hopefully I don't think that you're going to hear anywhere else. Um, again, I'm trying to be as open, as trustworthy, and as transparent as I possibly can in in everything that I do. Trying to give you guys all the knowledge that I possibly can to help you make really good decisions with your call center with your programs. So again, thank you guys again for listening. Really quick, um, as we kind of do at the end here, if you would like to join the Advice from a Call Center Geek texting community, totally free. I never sell. Just give uh, more content out to you on, on call center operations. Just text call center to 814-247-0366. Also, we have the Advice from a Call Center Geek community on Facebook. So please uh, take a peek at that. I am on LinkedIn and I post, guys, I'm posting like 20 times a day on everything call center. So hit me up on LinkedIn, follow me. Um, I'll try to follow you back. We'll get some conversations going there as well. But thanks a lot, guys. And I will talk to you later in the week.